Hello everyone, welcome to your morning coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a daily reading, a general daily reading for Monday, January 28th, 2019. Uh, this is a general reading, okay? So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. This is not specific to anything, not love, not a sign, not, nothing. This is just what spirit would like to discuss with us today. Yes, before I get started, I just want to say, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at divine underscore conversations, and you can follow me on Facebook at divine conversations 2711. And then also tonight, Monday night, we are going to be doing happy hour. So look out for that 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, excellent. Let's get started, guys. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for Monday, January 28th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. <clears throat> oh, also, tomorrow night, Betsy and I are going to be going live on youtube for a twin flame discussion um it's not going to be a reading i doubt we'll be pulling any cards that's not the intention for it we're just going to have a conversation about some shit <laughs> yeah because it's much needed so look out for that also tomorrow night i believe uh tuesday the 29th i believe that's going to be around 6 p.m is what we decided on okay so let's get started um, I did already see orange and yellow. To me, that would be the sacral chakra and the solar plexus. Um, I feel like emotions aren't too high today. And if they are, it's because... If, I'm sorry. If Well, if they are, they're kind of being, I want to say, stuffed down, stifled a bit. Um... It doesn't necessarily feel like it's in a bad way, though. It's more of, okay, we've cried enough. Let's get going. Because I feel like there's a lot of energy put towards action. And if you can tell, I'm getting, I'm getting a little bit of a later start today. The sun is making its grand appearance through my window. <laughs> but hey. It is what it is. I mean, I don't mind. As long as you guys can see. I think you guys can see. Okay. Yeah. It just makes it hard for me to see. I'm sorry. I'm totally, I don't even need to. <laughs> anyway, back to the reading. <sighs> yeah, Spirit's saying it's stifling. Some of you are really kind of just stifling your emotions down. And to be honest, it's not so bad. Like, it's kind of okay because it's not like you're trying to repress them. It's more of a situation like I just I need to I need to get up and do something. I can't I mean, I spent so much time wallowing in whatever this is. I I can't spend any more time doing that. It's not that you're trying to ignore your emotions or your feelings. It's more like I just want to get up and go now. So that's not so bad. I'm with it. <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna get one more shuffle in and then we'll get started. Okie dokie, here we go. Monday, January 28th. Yeah, well, would you look at that? Well, would you look at that? <laughs> oh, the hermit, I believe that was. Monday, January, oh. All right, as usual, we've got a lot here. Wow, okay, see what I mean? The Knight of Swords, <clears throat> this is action, okay? This is not taking any shit, not fucking around. We're moving, y'all, we are moving forward. You're either with me or you are against me. I would not recommend that you hold that energy for too long because ultimately that is just the whole, you're either with me or against me, that's kind of destructive. 
it can be quite confrontational. We all know how the Knight of Swords likes a confrontation. But you know, yet no, I told you guys, look, you got the chariot here. Okay? You got the Eight of Swords, the Four of Swords, which has come out in reverse. You also have the Knight of Cups, which is making, he's making, <clears throat> excuse me, he's making an appearance a lot lately. Page of Pentacles. And then we have this mess here. What is this? The Five of Wands, the Three of Swords, Ooh, Death, the Universe, and there's the Hermit. All right. Give me a second here, guys. Let me, uh, let me organize this a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> um, I do want to leave it this way, actually. Yeah, because this is how this is. All righty. So you have the Eight of Swords here. It's interesting. And despite despite all this movement that you have between the knight and the knight of swords and cups and the chariot, you still have the eight of swords a little bit. So some people are still up in their heads, they're still stuck in their heads, but despite being in this state, you're not sitting around waiting any longer. Well, not necessarily waiting, but you're not sitting around trying to understand, get perspective. You are moving. Okay, and I guess I should have said this before, um, but keep in mind, guys, that energies are fluid. This doesn't have to be something that happens today. Uh, this could be something that, you know, you could have broken free like this a few days ago. You might do that within a few days. Energies are fluid, so just take it as it resonates, okay? But there's an energy of coming out of a shell, coming out of hermit mode, okay? In, to some degree, and if only, if, if only just to take certain action to take it doesn't even have to be like you you're out for a long time you might you might poke your head out to make the xyz decision and then go right back in you know like that could be a, a product of this eight of swords energy but again it doesn't have to some of you are just like no fuck it i am not gonna sit around crying any longer and i don't blame you at some point you know Yes, have your cries, have your, 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 mourn, you know, mourn if you've lost something, mourn if you're, if you're just, if you're, you're healing through things, you're, you know, that, do that, but then get to work, you know what I mean? You don't want to be in that energy forever. And that's what's absolutely happening here. Okay, with the Knight of Cups and the Page of Pentacles, you're starting over. And the Knight of Cups has been talking about, uh, lately, to me, and, the, and actually, the, the Knight of Cups has been coming out a lot between general readings and personal readings. Like, I was with some friends last night, and the Knight of Cups, and I was doing some readings, and the Knight of Cups um, made an appearance, and it was for the same reason here. There's, there is a sense of an open heart. Okay. Your heart is opening up. You're living some a lot of us are starting to live from more of a heart-centered reality, which in fact is giving us a brand new start here with the page of pentacles. All right. Now, for some of you, the knight of cups and the page of pentacles is some sort of emotional offer. Someone you may have met somebody, someone new, and if it's not someone new, it is someone that you've known, but they are different in some way. And if you have, or now you could have, you could have either met someone like this, or you are this person who is coming out of a bit of a shell. You've gone through a deep transformation, and we'll talk about that's because that's what this is talking about down here. We'll get there in a second, but you may have gone through a deep transformation and you still might have some fears with the Eight of Swords. That doesn't, that Eight of Swords energy doesn't feel so serious because of the action that's being taken, moving in a different direction, choosing to feel differently about the situation, choosing to approach the situation differently, react differently towards the situation, whereas you might have been meek and demure and you shy would shy away you're now standing up for yourself you're taking action here and you might want to be taking action towards 
communicating with someone, showing, showing some sort of love, giving some sort of offer of love here with the <clears throat> Knight of Cups and the Page of Pentacles. And the Knight of Swords is giving you that mental clarity, even the confidence. I, I, I guess it's confidence. The confidence would be more of the Knight of Wands. It's, I guess you could say it's confidence, but it's not like passionate, fiery, vibrato confidence. It's like, it's mental, okay? It's the energies of just being blunt and direct and honest and upfront. You know, not trying to mince any words with the Knight of Swords. But be careful because that Knight of Swords energy can be pretty destructive, right? So if you are... Mm. Thank you, Spirit. That's the word. Assertive. So if you're being assertive in some way or you're trying to be assertive in some way or you're looking to be assertive in some way... Don't go straight for the jugular, <laughs> is what Spirit's saying, you know? Even though in some cases people might push you and you want to. You might want to, but, and I totally get it, but don't go straight for the jugular. Now, five the, 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 this bottom row here, this is what we're emerging from, or you're emerging from, however you want to say it. Five of Wands, Three of Swords, Death, the Universe, and the Hermit. The Universe is a unique card in this deck. It talks about everything coming full circle. What have you learned? What are you learning? Okay, and in some cases, man, we have really learned some shit. Five of Wands, Three of Swords. And for some of you, this Five of Wands has everything to do with being conflicted, being... <clears throat> I mean, if you want to say it this way, think about the Twin Flame situation, okay? Now, you don't have to be a Twin Flame to resonate with this, uh, but I'm giving an example because the Twin Flame situation is a pretty extreme situation, right? And what I'm feeling from this energy, from the energies of the Five of Wands and the Three of Swords is someone hurt you, someone broke your heart, or maybe they did it inadvertently. They, maybe they didn't exactly try to break your heart but they did nonetheless and it might have hurt a lot and you were conflicted about about it because it's like well this person i love them dearly again you don't have to be a twin flame to resonate this this could be anybody really maybe i should just take twin flame out of my vocabulary <laughs> oh they say yes you should <laughs> okay but anyway you're in you're in some sort of situation in which you were madly in love with someone or very deeply, had very deep feelings with someone, blah, 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 your heart got broken. And your, the conflict surrounding it was, well, I really care about this person. I really like this person. I don't want, to, I love this person. I don't want to leave this person behind. I, 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 I kind of want to give them a second chance, but I don't know if I should. I really don't think I should. They're kind of a scumbag, this, that, the blah, 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 right? Well, eventually that died out. <laughs> change happened transformation the transformation that was destined to happen in this relationship came through and now you're a bigger better and bolder person you have really learned i mean these are some deep lessons here between the hermit and the universe i mean you can't get much deeper than this this is direct communication with the universal energies this is like direct injection of universal higher consciousness, spiritual awareness, <clears throat> all up in your space. <laughs> and yeah, it's tumultuous and it's weird and it's painful. <clears throat> it's aggravating. But look at you now with the chariot. I mean, look at you now. The chariot, the knight of cups, the knight of swords. I swear to God, we might as well just have the knight of wands out here. Because between the knight of cups, uh, the knight of cups and the knight of swords, that's what this feels like. It's and the chariot, it's like you're not fucking around anymore. 
And I'm not saying you're so serious that you don't know how to fun. No, you don't know how to fun. Wow, good, good, good one, Eric. <laughs> good grammar. But um, you don't know how, it's not like you don't know how to fun, have fun. God damn it, I said it again. It's not like you don't know how to have fun. And it's not like you don't want to still have fun. But, I mean, fuck if you haven't grown up. <laughs> you know, fuck if you haven't developed a few gray hairs through this situation. But you know what? That's not something to pluck. That's not something to get rid of. That shows experience. It's like a badge of honor as far as the universe is concerned. You know? You've been through some shit. <laughs> and it's beautiful. That's why you're here to begin with. To get through some shit. Right? All right, guys. So let's clarify a little bit here. We're going to start with the Eight of Swords. The Chariot and the Four of Swords. Now, um, I do want to say... Because it just came through here that this per that you that if you are dealing with a new person, there's someone new out there that actually really likes you. And they may have they yeah. The Eight of Swords, the Chariot, and the Four of Swords could be either per I mean it I don't even know why I'm I'm choosing to say this again. And something came to me. And I wanted to say it, but as I'm, as I'm speaking through it and thinking through how I'm going to say it, I've realized I've already said it, so I'm not going to repeat myself. And the spirit wanted me to say it, but now I don't even remember what it was. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I was trying too hard to put it into words and then sabotaged it, but I'd already said it. So to clarify here, I'm using the Epic Tarot. That is, I don't have the box. I put the box in my closet, but it, it's a beautiful deck. It is an absolutely beautiful deck. Um, it is available at Om Shanti Bookshop, where I, I read in person every Friday. If you want to go to their website and um, maybe order a version from them, they have it. They will ship it for you. The website is in the description box of my videos. Yeah. Alrighty. One more shuffle here, and then we're going to clarify. We're going to start with the Eight of Swords, the Chariot, and the Four of Swords in reverse. Quite honestly, I like seeing the Four of Swords in reverse right now because, damn it, I want to get moving personally. So, hey. <laughs> All right, guys. Starting with the Eight of Swords, the Chariot, and the Four of Swords in reverse. Please clarify, spirit. Please clarify. Clarify. What do we got? Okay. Ooh. All right. All right. Underneath the deck is the Ten of Swords, and the Ten of Swords is in reverse. I told you, you you're not crying over this any longer. Okay? The High Priestess. The Four of Pentacles in reverse. I love it. The world. You have the Seven of Swords in reverse, you have the Three of Wands in reverse, and you have the Queen of Swords. Now, I just want to point this out. Say hello to Archangel Michael. Hi, Archangel Michael. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So I want to point this out in this deck so that you guys know, okay, so that you're not staring at the screen all confused, like, what the fuck is that? This, <laughs> this is the Queen of Swords. In this deck, the, the court cards are animals, so the page is a unicorn, and I didn't know it was like this until I bought the deck and opened it that night, and I was like, oh my god, there are unicorns in my deck, <laughs> and I got all excited. But unicorns are pages. Griffins, which are like bird mammals, which is, I guess that's a really crude way of, of explaining it, but that's, I, I'll have, I don't know, whatever. Griffins are the knights, the queens are phoenixes, and the kings are dragons. And here you have the Queen of Swords. The Queen of Swords is like, enough with the tears, enough with the emotions, let's just get moving. And it's not like she's trying to be insensitive. She just, she just doesn't have time for the time or the patience for that. So now she's coming forward and just being like, look, look bitches, we've learned our lessons here, okay? Can we just, between, <laughs> between the Queen of Swords the High Priestess, and the world. Our lessons have been learned. Can we just move forward now, please? Thanks. I'd really appreciate that. 
because I'm stuck of being here, being in this shitty situation, she just said. I, and to be quite honest, I don't blame you. I don't blame her. Like, it's time to get moving. Uh, interesting. You have the Seven of Swords, the Four of Pentacles, and the Three of Wands in reverse. In this deck, Wands is the suit of books. And it's very much about writing a book here. What I'm hearing is the chapter is over with the Three of Wands because the Three of Wands in reverse is not something I, 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 I want to see, but now that I'm feeling it out, it's like, okay, no, this is not so bad. Because what I'm hearing is that the chapter is done. We're not writing this any longer. We're scrapping this book and we're starting a new one now. Yeah, we may have only gotten three chapters in, but we're not investing in this any longer. Four of Pentacles in reverse. In this deck, four is, uh, uh, Pentacles are discs, so technically four of discs in reverse. Not holding on to it any longer. Just boop, just letting it go. Dropping it like a hot potato. Dropping it like it's a, a hot, a, 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 a bad fat, almost. Seven of Swords in reverse is like, bitch, I am not deceiving myself any longer with this, and I'm not letting you deceive me either. I am not going to stab myself self in the back any longer by associating with this, giving this any more energy, this, that, and the third. Ten of Swords in reverse. Finally putting the, end, the, the completion in place and putting it to rest and saying, no more, let's just move on. I'll drink to that. <laughs> and now we're moving forward here to the Knight of Cups and the Page of Pentacles, who could be someone that you may have recently met that's very interested in you, um, wants to get to know you, wants to grow with you in some way. And I guess this is what I was trying to say before but couldn't put it into words. They are very much feeling, they could very much be in a similar position as you. And that could be a selling point, I guess you could say, between you two in building some type of type of bond or relationship. Now, you could also be this person that wants to make some sort of move towards someone. And if you're not making a move towards someone or if someone is not trying to make a move towards you, then you are just moving forward basically with your heart on your sleeve. And this is exactly how I was saying it to my friend last night in which this Knight of Cups came out. Having your heart on your sleeve is not a bad thing. Yes, it does indicate vulnerability, but you cannot be in this world and love without being vulnerable. Vulnerable is Vulnerability is not a weakness, it is an absolute strength. But being vulnerable does not mean that you are putting yourself in a position to be hurt on purpose like you're not you're not inviting someone to hurt you no you still would need to have boundaries and all that good stuff protect yourself but be vulnerable open open to love open to experience instead of because because you could say open because i did hear it so i guess someone is saying is being snarky and saying uh, uh open to pain no open to experience Gotcha. <laughs> All right, so clarifying the Knight of Cups and the Page of Pentacles, please, Spirit. Ooh, the Nine of Cups. Good golly. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> okay, we have... The Three of Cups in reverse, and I was reading with these cards last night. I didn't realize that my cards, oh, Lord in heaven. Some of my cards, uh, the cards got reversed, but that's okay. I'm just going with the flow, because I remember saying to people last night, well, I guess I'm reading reversals again, guys. <laughs> so here we go, and I forgot to straighten it out, and I'm not going to worry about it. Three of Cups in reverse. Give me a second, guys. Well, we have the king and the queen of wands here. Wow. With temperance. We have the empress in reverse. We have the devil. 
with the Six of Swords. Interesting. Wow, we wow, wow, you guys. Holy moly. Okay, so the Three of Cups in reverse is talking about basically not giving a fuck what other people have to say because of this. Now, looky here. You've got the King and the Queen of Wands. You see how the other dra that there's a dragon and a phoenix there? Dragons are kings in this deck. So either this is a counterpart that you have encountered, someone that really matches you very, very well, or you've got this, well, it could also be that you have this balance yourself. And to be quite honest, you most likely do have this balance yourself if you are coming into contact with a, con with, with a, a true counterpart here king and queen of wands but i do feel like this is your balance also because you also have temperance okay and temperance is alchemy for many of us you really we really have been working on this balance within beautiful You've also been very patient. Beautiful. Even though you may have thrown a temper tantrum here or there, you've, been, you've still been patient. Again, you're not, it's not like you, you're not allowed to express your emotions or feel your emotions. And then we have the nine and the ten of cups. You are either balanced, whole, and happy, and are fi you're, it, it, you're either finding this Ten of Cups energy within, or you're finding this Nine of Cups energy within. There is fulfillment here in, in, in a way. There is wish fulfillment. And I'm getting, picking up an energy of finding joy and happiness in the monetary fulfillment in the little things in life. Because the Nine of Cups, when it talks about wish fulfillment, it's monetary. So it's going out and having some drinks with some friends and getting a nice buzz and having a good night. It's, it can be a one night stand. You're feeling a randy and you're going out and you find someone and boop, you two do the you bump uglies. And it's like, thanks, that was cute. I'm gonna go on my way now, thank you. Okay, so the Nine of Cups often talks about wish fulfillment in monetary form. Whereas the star talks about wish fulfillment in a major grand scale, right? Here, what this is saying to me is if you're experiencing this Ten of Cups energy, this fulfillment, you're finding it in the little things of life, which is absolutely what this balance here with the King and the Queen of Wands would bring you. You have this balance of masculine and feminine within. And you're starting to realize, oh wow, I really do have everything that I need and that I want. I really don't need anything else. The Empress in reverse with the Devil and the Six of Swords, but let's look at this. I don't need this other person. I'm not codependent on this other person any longer with the Six of Swords. Major healing. Major healing of uh, twisted feminine energy, okay? Toxic twisted feminine energy, that codependent energy, that energy of I just can't live without you. Bitch, please. I have got my own life. And yeah, it might suck that you're not around. It might be painful for a hot second. But let me tell you something, honey. I got my own life to live. And I, and I ain't about to be up in here crying about it no more. That's the healing that has come through with the Six of Swords. So now, because of this, you are either open to someone really coming in and I guess you could say saving the day between the Knight of Cups and the Knight of Swords, even though none of us are really looking for that knight in shining armor in that sense any longer. Because we're looking for someone not to someone not to save uh, the damsel in distress, but someone to stand up 
next to the damsel and hold their own. Because let me tell you, with this king and queen of wands here, let me tell you, homegirl is doing it for herself. Homeboy is doing it for himself. It really doesn't need anyone else there to, quote, get them through. Wow. Ain't that some shit. <laughs> so now, let's clarify the Five of Wands, Three of Swords, Death, the Universe, and the Hermit. I really feel like all of this is in the past. This is what you have or are emerge you have emerged from or are emerging from or are going to emerge from. Because some of you may still actually be in this energy here, this hermit mode, this basically everything coming full circle. We already have the world come out here. Clarifying this emergence. So let's clarify here. Five of Wands, Three of Swords, Death, the Universe, the Hermit. Oh, look, there's that page. Ah, underneath the deck, you have the Ten of Wands. Look, 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 you guys. Isn't it so cute? Look at the unicorn. Neat. That's the Page of Wands. The Nine of Wands. Wow. The Page of Pentacles in reverse and the Three of Pentacles in reverse. That is interesting. Very interesting. I felt like we had the Three of Pentacles. No, we had the Page of Pentacles. Okay, so in the past here, this energy that we're emerging from, wow, wow, this is, this is, this is deep and intense. So we have the Page of Pentacles. I'm gonna start with this. The Page of Pentacles and the Three of Pentacles, both in reverse. It's like you've traded this slow moving, honest, committed, hardworking energy of self discovery, self realization, not self discovery, self, self, uh, um, self mastery. There it is with the Page of Pentacles, Pentacles and the Three of Pentacles, you've traded it for passion, excitement, integrity, authenticity. And, 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 and it's funny because the Page of Pentacles here does talk about commitment and honesty, but it's also conformity because it's, it's Pentacles and it's a page. So they're very much learning from their elders. They are um, doing the quote, right thing as a young, fresh, maybe adolescent, I guess you could say it, even though you're not in, you're you're probably not an adolescent any longer. You're probably well into your adulthood. The page would be the apprentice, right? The apprentice type energy, and it's the same here with the page of wands, but it's different. It still can be a, an apprentice energy, but it feels different here. This is like, no, I'm being authentic now, and there's a good amount of defensiveness here with the nine of wands. But it's perseverance, and it is, it is, it's like you're emerging from this situation in a truthful, some, I guess you could say it is, you could see it as somewhat of a naive energy, but it's not stupid, youthful, honest, but authentic, true to who you are, and that would be where the Nine of Wands energy comes into play, because it's like you're not... You are, what? You're not taking any shit. You're gonna be who you are, and that's all there is to it. You're done sitting around, learning or doing all of these things that everybody else says that you should do to get where you wanna go. Page of Pentacles, Three of Pentacles, both in reverse. No, you're doing it your way now. Nine of Wands, Page of Wands. 
ones. And then that takes you to the Ten of Wands. So look at look at here, guys. You have the Nine and the Ten of both Cups and Wands. That's progression and completion. Now, for some of you, you're recognizing that there are some burdens that you need to let go of. But for others of you, it's like it's already been let go of. Done. Bye. Moving on. Okay. So now we're going to get into the oracle section here. And I do want to get some animal spirit oracle. And then we'll close with the crystal mandala deck. Best message, please, Spirit, for today, Monday, January 28th, 2019. Whale. Whale is in reverse. And here you have octopus underneath the deck. Octopus talks about lack of boundaries. Whale is in reverse. But what this, I think... Again, this is just, I don't think this is bad. I think this is an emerging, an energy of emergence coming out of the depths. You've been down in the depths, and I don't mean like, well, you might have been down in the dumps, but you've been down in the depths really getting some hard work done. But now you're emerging from that. You're coming up, back up to the surface. I guess you could say you're coming up for air in a sense. Uh, whale. I'm going to turn it up top so you can see. But whale. Desire to delve deeper. Profound peace. Ancient wisdom. The whale represents profound emotional health and stability. Whale personalities are not afraid of emotional expression or traversing difficult terrain as they have overcome many challenges in their lives. These experiences have enriched them, given them stability, strength, and a depth that is rare. Whale energy is usually linked to the feminine forces of compassion and communication. We can depend on whale personalities when all else seems lost and trust them to be a beacon in our darkest hour. When in balance, whale is calm, steady, and deeply compassionate. When out of balance, whale is heavy and slips into the old, quote, story. To bring into balance, one must practice regular self-care. And whale did come out in reverse here but to me that was just saying that you're coming out of the depths now you've been there you've been you dove deep and now you're emerging for the most part for some of you you are not diving deep and you're staying in this codependent energy with octopus octopus is an energy of potentially oversharing of um, lacking boundaries. Okay. Uh, the octopus can stick its tentacles in a bunch of different things. And then it's like, oh no, oh no. Now what do I do? Mm, can lead to messy relationships. But I feel like you're coming out of that learning experience for the grand majority of you, I guess you could say. All right. So now we're going to close out the reading with the Crystal Manzala deck here. All righty, guys, one more shuffle, and then we'll see what we've got here. Here we go. Best message, please, spirit. There it is. Oh, underneath the deck you have Ascended Master White Matthew and Dan Burite, Original Self. And I really just think this is down, you getting down to who you truly are. Your original self. I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. But your message here is card number 37, Goddess Tara and Tibetan Quartz. Her eye ever open. So let's read that, guys. Mm. 
Here we go. We bring you the empowerment of her eye ever open. The divine protection around you is absolute and complete. Your simple request for the Universal Mother to watch out for you and to protect what has meaning for you allows you to live your life, do your work, and know the most powerful one is caring for your well-being on all levels. You can trust, be free from worry, and remain open to the world with joy in your heart. As you grow spiritually, the reach of your light increases. You become increasingly open and visible to more souls. You become as a shining spiritual sun bringing light to the earth. Do you notice that people have different reactions to the sun? Some worship, others respect, and some fear. These reactions are about, to, are about the belief systems and consciousness of the people, not the nature of the sun itself. The sun is exactly the same, whether it is recognized for its health-giving properties or for being destructive to health. The sun is powerful, and it continues to shine and simply be what it is, unaffected by the reactions of those to its light. For those on the path of love and light, there are lessons to be learned from this. If you decide whether or not to be who you are, to shine your light, based on the reactions of those around you, then you will be forever confused. There will always be those that admire and support you in who you are, and those that fear for their own fearful reasons will not. If you allow the negativity of those in fear to become part of how you view yourself, you will undermine yourself. <clears throat> you will have allowed negativity to sabotage your spiritual life. This can happen when you take to heart the critical remark of another who is more interested in criticizing others than focusing on their own personal healing. You may not wish to do it. You may even realize what is happening, and yet their fear may, may still make you stumble a little, doubt yourself, or feel afraid that if you keep shining bright, you may suffer attacks from others. You may even wonder why you have attracted this situation to yourself, which is a way healers can unintentionally use their intention to assume spiritual responsibility to undermine themselves. Being responsible for your own responses to the world is appropriate, assuming that the consciousness responds to the world is, oh, sorry, assuming, <laughs> assuming that the consciousness that another chooses for themselves is your doing, is not. Okay, wait, hold on, let me say that again. Being responsible for your own responses to the world is appropriate, assuming that the consciousness that another chooses for themselves is your doing, is not, I, and I, I, I guess that means is not appropriate. If you do this, you are colluding with the fear, agreeing that it is appropriate behavior for another to blame you for their pain. This is not wise, true, or empowering for anyone. Last, last paragraph. As you learn to support your open and loving nature with strong boundaries and self-respect, which is actually what <clears throat> um, octopus would represent, <clears throat> As you learn to support your open and loving nature with strong boundaries and self-respect, the Universal Mother, Tara, with her eye ever open, will also watch out for you. As you expand your light, she will create a field of fierce compassion and protective grace around you. If one fearful person is attempting to attack you, could cause you to lose your footing and prevent many people from benefiting from your light, she will step in often without even realizing that you need divine protection and support. Often without you even realizing that you need divine protection and support. You can relax and know that once you make a, committed, a commitment to the Universal Mother to help nature, the world with, I'm sorry, help nurture the world with love, you shall benefit from her unconditional grace, protection, and support. With her eye ever open, nothing shall go unnoticed, and her notice stops fear in its tracks. Well, my, my, ain't that just so beautiful. So there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys have a great day. I will see you later on today for happy hour, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on YouTube. We will be live. I'll be doing a general energy reading, and um, then I will open the floor up for single question readings. And to keep in mind, tomorrow, Betsy and I are going to be going live for a Twin Flame discussion. Yes, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, tomorrow, Tuesday, January 29th. But with that, I hope you guys have a great day, and I will catch you later. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye!